Yo, what's going on? So this video goes out to all my fellow and prepared techs. Now, if you ever get a Korean half bridge amplifier, an old school one like this DC9K, there's something very important you need to watch out for on the output section with a PWM drive. So this one's had a brand new spanking driver card because I happen to have a spare one lying around. It was quicker than repairing the old one. And at this point, you would go ahead and probe the low side gate, low side drive to make sure that you have good clean PWM waves like that and then you think okay wicked this is looking good I can go ahead and fit some new FETs in but wait there's something very important you need to check because of the age of this amplifier if you fit your new FETs they could explode on the first few power ups and this is what I want to show you so with the PWM when it builds the wave needs to rise incredibly smoothly just a smooth bloop just, the, just literally that, no glitching, and if this line, if this, if this low rail here, if this jumps up before the wave builds, then that's bad news. So let's pulse the remote and see what happens. So the first one looks like this. Right, so you see there was a bit of glitching there before the wave built. Let's try it again. That looks better. That's how it should look. It should just be a smooth, instantaneous transition to the PWM generating. However, Sometimes, because these amplifiers are like they are, they glitch and you get a bump, like a little pop, before the PWM builds smoothly. And what I can do is I can actually go ahead and zoom right out on the time divide to slow the scope right down and show you what that looks like with it lengthened out like this. So I'm going to pulse the remote a few times, and like I say, it only happens sometimes. But when it does, you'll find that it looks like this. If I turn that off and go to Trace Recall. Okay, so look at this. This is one that I just did a moment ago, just a pulsing the remote. Now you can see here, before the PWM starts, there's this big bump in DC. And what that does is it turns all the FETs on at the same time, for that brief moment that that signal is there. Okay, and that's flipping bad news. The FETs do not like that. It puts huge stress on the FETs and it drains some stuff out of the rail caps and it, it, it do enough of these and the FETs will explode. So why is this happening and how the hell do you fix that? So the reason that this is happening here is to do with how the driver card is being fed with VCC voltage, supply voltage to all the chips. So if we take a look at the drive card here, you can see here, you'll know if you repair these often, that the wave, the PWM, is generated in the middle of the, in the, middle of the thing here. It's generated by this 072C and the LM211. So this is a bit like your source signal. If you're thinking about a hi-fi setup, this is your source signal. And these drive ICs, these are like your amplifier. Now, if you, in your hi-fi or in in any audio system it's recommended to turn on the source signal first like your CD player and then turn on the amplifier if you turn on the amplifier first and then turn on the source signal uh, source then what happens is as you turn that on you often hear a pop through the speakers because as you turn on the source thing there's a little little pulse down the RCA line the signal line and you hear a pop through the speakers that's very similar to what's happening here in order to prevent this bump in the low side drive PWM generating these, these chips here, all this circuit needs to turn on first before the drive chips activate. If the drive chips activate first before these power up, then you end up with this pop on the PWM here. I've gone through and checked and confirmed that this is the case uh, by fitting various different parts and limiting the current to the PWM generation circuit here. So in this amplifier, the reason that this one is doing it is because the chips in the middle here, the PWM generation circuit, isn't being fed with enough current to turn on quickly enough. So this only happens when the amplifier has some rail voltage in the caps already. So as far as the drive chips are concerned, they are pretty much ready to be turned on and go straight away. Um, they are fed with, with um, current from these 7812s over here, so it's a separate source of power. So these are good to go. However, these ones need to be turned on and they need to be fed with current coming from these voltage regulators here, which is a plus minus VCC. And when you turn the amplifier off, this isn't referenced to rail voltage or anything. This voltage disappears pretty much instantly. And when you turn the amplifier back on again, it has to build from zero. Whereas these ones store some power and some voltage and can power on the drive chips pretty much instantly. 
Now, when this amplifier was first built, obviously these didn't have this issue. The amplifiers were reliable and they have been for absolutely years. However, I believe that in the same way that you have different tolerances between MOSFETs, like some old MOSFETs might have different VGS to newer ones, I think the IRS 21844S chips have changed over time and they turn on slightly quicker than they used to. And the reason for that is because with this amplifier, these chips are turning on before these were, before the, the PWM generation circuit. And the reason it's doing that is because not enough current is being supplied by this VCC circuit over here. Now the way to resolve this issue is to jump over these resistors with a small piece of wire. Take them out of the circuit entirely. What these are doing is these are like fusible current limit resistors and these are before the inputs to the regulators. So these are, come the, the voltage that is generated over here and is rectified and comes up the board over here. Uh, sorry, is re yeah, is like rectified by these, but these resistors are in series with the inputs to these regulators. Now, these actually stop, the, these actually bottleneck the current being um, sufficient enough to get to these chips in time. So what happens by jumping over them, you get rid of the current bottleneck from the, uh, the resistance of the, I think only like one ohm or very, very, very low impedance, um, but they do bottleneck the current uh, supply to these chips enough for that bump to appear. So by jumping over them, you rectify the issue. And I'm going to show you that just now by jumping over a small wire and showing on the screen that, that bump never appears. You might think, oh, okay, well, there might be some other issue with the circuit, like uh, these might not be up to the job. Replacing these with higher current uh, replacements would, would get the job done quicker. You might think that it's these small green inductors that have lost the ability to pass current. No, it's none of these things. These things have all been changed, and I've done this on countless amplifiers now. The worst one I had was a Sundown 6K, and that had a humongous uh, bit of DC before the PWM started, and no matter what you did, I couldn't get rid of it, and the only thing that solved it was by jumping over these resistors here. So, first, let's go ahead and show you that on the bottom of the amplifier. If I lift this up here. You can see that I've already done this on this amplifier to confirm that it actually fixes the issue. The small wires there, so I'm going to go ahead and solder those on now and show you the difference on the scope. There we go, so that's just very roughly soldered on there for the video. And let's bring the amplifier back down. Plug the power wire back in that just fell out. It's only low current, so I literally just do this because it's quicker to pull it in and out very quickly. Right. So let's start the scope up again, turn trace to memory off, so we can see what's going on on the screen here. And let's probe the low side gate again. And now let's fire it up and let's see what we see on the scope. Okay, PWM built instantly. Now let's keep pulsing the remote and see whether we get any more glitchiness. See how it's building beautifully every single time. There's not a single jump up to the top of this wave before it builds. It's building smoothly and beautifully every time. And if we zoom right out and go back to the slow version, the slow scope screen, you can see here that the start of this PWM is very, very good every time. It's sharp every time. There's none of that DC bump before the PWM starts like you saw on trace memory 2. So if I turn that off again and go back to trace memory 2, you can see here this is completely resolved. There's no more of that. And so what that causes, like I said, it causes all the FETs to turn on at the same time. Uh, it causes huge stress on the FETs themselves. Some of the rail voltage that's in the caps gets dumped through the FETs while they're on all together and it causes the amplifier to fail prematurely. So literally these resistors are not required. All they do is they add some kind of fusible, um, add some sort of current limiting to the uh, voltage regulators, which is not a requirement whatsoever. Many amps don't have this at all. So my recommendation is to jump over these resistors here. Let these have full current supply from the power supply section so that it can turn on the PWM generation circuit before these chips get a chance to activate and send a bump down the low side drive. I hope this has been interesting and uh, yeah if you've got any questions leave me a comment otherwise thanks for watching.